Uh, my name is Willie Mullinson and uh, I'm an Emeritus Professor of Medicine at the University of, University of the Free State. So I'll repeat that. Thank you, Tommy, your uh, relationship with the Cushtostridum nutrition. Um, why is that uh, so important yeah. in your research? Um, Christus Stratum came to see me about three years ago to discuss his uh, nutrition intervention for the management of obesity with me and to, to test the idea of developing this into an aid that could be distributed more widely and that could help more people. So initially I regarded it as mainly a very low calorie diet or a very low fat kind of diet uh, which has a place. But then Christus started to show me pictures and, uh, uh, of patients that he has helped through his lifetime uh, with this particular diet and then I became interested and I said, Christo, if you would like, we, can, uh, we cannot endorse your product without a scientific study. So let's look at this in a scientific way and study properly in a randomized controlled trial and see what the end result is in terms of weight reduction, safety, efficacy, and he was immediately interested because he was very confident in his product. So we thought, okay, so let's do it. And uh, uh, in further meetings that we had, I also got the sense that Christo has uh, a philanthropic approach to life and to patients. He, he has helped many, many patients in the past with, without uh, publicity like this, for instance. He, that was not the case. Initially, he just started out helping patients because it was by word of mouth it spread that he has something that is worthwhile and it works. So I sense that he has also a philanthropic uh, uh, attitude or an approach to life and then I formulated uh, this, uh, this concept of developing a metabolic research uh, institute or the metabolic research center uh, in Bloemfontein associated with the University of the Free State and Christo was immediately interested so that's why this came about. So Christo is uh, uh, our, our main sponsor but it is a donation to the University of the Free State and it is uh, a grant without any restrictions. So we use the grant to study what we would like to study in this context and we are very grateful for the opportunity so we're going to open our doors with you soon. Can you just tell me that um, the reason Lucy Sway is here today, so essentially she's here to undergo a part of your um, research, in, I, I assume, so that's good for her. Lucy is here for me so that we can meet and uh, so that we can assess her uh, and I've already discussed with Christy the possibility of designing a clinical trial and see if we can formulate a scientific protocol for the management of these severely obese patients with lymphedema and uh, to see whether we can come up with a medical solution to a problem that was in the past regarded as a surgical problem with a surgical solution. But uh, Chris has convinced me with a couple of, with a handful of patients that he's already effectively treated in with his intervention that it is possible to do it medically. So that's why I, as a, uh, as a physician, became interested in what we would call a surgical problem. Great. And what's your um, relationship with uh, obesity and lymphedema? What's your kind of expertise in that field? Uh, well, uh, obesity and uh, the related conditions is uh, quite an interest of me. I did, did my doctorate on that more than 20 years ago when I started studying this phenomenon amongst our indigenous populations in South Africa, we were very concerned about the escalating prevalence of obesity and its associated problems, especially diabetes and of course hypertension in our black population in South Africa. Uh, the reason for that is what we call a nutrition transition. That's where the population of South Africa and also for that matter also uh, people in sub-Saharan Africa is now been following a more westernized kind of diet, so less grain intake and higher fat intake and uh, so that's been the, the uh, nutrition transition and that we think is an important uh, aspect of the epidemic that we witness today in South Africa where obesity really now is one of the most visual public health problems in our country at the moment 
I think if you just go on the street, you will see what the extent of this problem actually is. And uh, the related conditions, of course, uh, would lead the, or would uh, be the cause that these patients would present to our hospitals and clinics. Uh, they would really present with diabetes and come to you and say, listen doctor, I'm overweight, please help me. They will come with complications and problems like hypertension and stroke and heart failure, heart attacks and diabetes. Diabetes is of course also the, the most important uh, complication that we see associated with this epidemic. The prevalence of obesity in South Africa is, uh, I, I can say, almost the highest in the world if we look at our population at large. We had approximately 24% of women would be overweight, that is a BMI above 25, and uh, about 40% would be obese, that is a, a BMI above 30. So all in all, it's about 64% of the South African population of women in South Africa who are overweight and obese with all the complications associated with it. Fortunately, for men or for males, uh, the situation is slightly better. It's approximately 10% of men who are overweight and approximately 20% uh, who would be obese then. So in all in all, it would be approximately 30% of men who would be obese. So it's about half the prevalence of that that we see in black females. And that is a unique South African situation. If you look at figures in Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, you will find that there is a gradient from countries like Ethiopia and right down to the southern tip of, of, uh, of South Africa. So the prevalence just increases. The more, the further south you go, the higher the prevalence of obesity. Let's uh, turn back to lymphedema a little bit. Um, and also your centre here. So tell me about the centre. What's your interest? I mean, what was the centre set up for? What did you set up the centre? Well, this centre is uh, first of all to study the metabolic complications of obesity uh, and also to test various treatments, medical treatments for obesity. Bariatric surgery is quite fashionable at the moment and we know that it is the most effective way of reversing obesity and also diabetes associated with, with obesity. But unfortunately it's only a, f a handful of people that actually can afford the operation in the first instance and uh, secondly, well fit to undergo the operation. So many patients are so advanced with their comorbidities that they're not fit for surgery anymore. So we would like to focus on obesity and see if we can come up with uh, uh, a simple, affordable solution for this problem. Now, prevention, of course, is the most important thing, and, but that's a public health problem. That's something that the healthcare industry, as well as the Department of Health and Government need to tackle. On an individual level, you can't do that. But once patients are already obese, that's where we come in and we would try and we would like to help. So, yes, we would like to look at various interventions. Uh, Professor Tim Nix, with his controversial diet, is now causing a lot of uh, debate in this country, which, of course, is a good thing. I do not agree with Professor Nix's approach to this problem, but uh, at least. It, uh, it creates a debate that is necessary so that we can study the problem from a scientific point of view and see what kind of diet is most effective uh, or nutrition intervention is most effective. Now, lymphedema is one of the mechanical complications of obesity, so to speak. It is a matter of venous stasis in the legs. So because these patients are so overweight and the more overweight you become, the more difficult it becomes for your blood to return from your lower limbs and feet back to your chest and your heart to be recirculated. So venous stasis and lymph stasis start to develop. So it's a mechanical problem. <coughs> and then there's an extravasation of fluid that takes place into the subcutaneous tissues. And that results, of course, in edema, uh, which eventually becomes uh, fibrotic. And that, that is what distinguishes that lymphedema from the edema that we associate with cardiac disease and with renal disease. So this kind of edema is quite a, an indurated kind of edema. So it affects the skin very badly. The skin becomes thickened and almost wart-like. And eventually the skin blisters 
and ulcers develop, and those ulcers are extremely difficult to heal. Uh, and eventually these patients become bedridden, and it's a vicious cycle. The more advanced, the more overweight they become, the less physically active they become, and in the end they become bedridden, or they end up in a chair, sit a lot with more mechanical factors contributing to this extravasation of fluid uh, in the lower limbs with blister formation and, uh, and ulceration. So, you know, it's a very difficult uh, medical complication of obesity to reverse. And, uh, uh, but certainly with, the, uh, with adequate or substantial loss of weight, it is possible to mobilize these patients again and also to mobilize the fluid from the lower limbs back into the circulation and then to improve the skin condition and eventually uh, uh, the, the condition itself. But in the end, this is a multifactorial problem and you need a team approach in this regard. So it will be the physician on the one hand, physiotherapist, nutritionist, uh, psychologist to keep on motivating the patient to lose weight and to uh, again become uh, mobile again and physically more active. So it's a, it's a team approach and eventually the surgeon may also become involved uh, in extreme cases. So you've talked nicely there about lymphedema and you talked earlier about obesity. Can you just give me a short, very short sentence uh, linking the two together? Let's say in a different form of obesity, one of which is lymphedema or something, something that just relates. What is it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, obesity is not only a subcutaneous collection of fat in, in your, beneath your skin, but it's also a collection of fat within your abdominal cavity. And that's where the pressure from outside becomes a limiting factor for the return of the flow of lymph and venous blood from your limb limbs back into your abdominal cavity and chest cavity. So it's a mechanical problem. So there's an accumulation of fat, just a massive amount of fat in the abdomen and also in the subcutaneous skin. And that would then interfere with the backflow, the drainage the normal flow of blood, of, of, of blood and, uh, and lymph from the lower limbs back to the, to, the, to the chest and the heart. So it's a mechanical problem. It's just a lot of fat exerting this pressure on the lymphatic vessels and also on your, on your blood vessels, especially the, the, the venous side of, of the circulation. So is, is lymphedema a form of obesity? Or that is no, it's a complication of complication. obesity. Yeah. So, so can you just kind of say that in a nice short yeah. No, uh, lymphedema in uh, this context is a complication of obesity. There's also a, another kind of lymphedema that we see in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, more in the tropical areas, where it is a parasitic disease that would affect the lymphatics. But we don't see that in South Africa. In South Africa, we see lymphedema as a complication of obesity. There's also a rare form of lymphedema which is inborn. Uh, and uh, which is congenital, it's got nothing to do with obesity as such, but that's a different entity. What we're talking about here is the lymphedema secondary to this massive accumulation of fat, mostly in the abdominal wall and all the blood flow, lymph flow.